Okay, so just before my quick break that I needed, because find my coffee cup is this is so big. That's what she said. Excuse me. Um, and I do have my sounders here somewhere. I don't know. You guys have to. Uh, somebody tell me if this is working. I need Stephen Aries help. Oh, that reminds me. It's Kitsy's birthday. Kitsy, the wife of one of the hosts here on Mojo Five O. I'm not going to give you her full name. Partly because she's probably embarrassed about who her husband is, but also partly because she didn't choose a life in the public eye. It can't be her fault, the career that her husband has chosen, but she is a fabulous woman, and I don't understand why she's with him at all. So tell me if this works. All right. So the Senate ran. Oh, no, no, no. And I was wrong. There were 11 Republicans that joined the Democrats in voting to end the national emergency at the southwest border. But the vote 54 to 41 is not enough. So the president able to veto it, which I think we know he's definitely going to do. But what they're trying to do is, okay, if it's not a national emergency, then there's not going to be any more military funding that's being redirected to the barrier. And why would they? Boom, boom, boom. All right. So we have found this thing. We've got this whistleblower. We don't know where they come from. We don't, you know, we definitely know they have ties to the Democrats somehow. So it's somebody in the deep state. They didn't really hear the call. They just heard somebody else telling them about the call. All of this crap, it hits the airwaves, it's taking over the headlines, the House is making a big show out of the whole thing, and so the Senate, in the background, runs in and takes a vote to end the funding for the border wall. That is a national security issue. And 11 Republicans jumping ship again. I was talking about Marco Rubio from my lovely state of Florida. Yes, I think he was angry with Trump about the whole little Marco Rubio and the little hands thing. And they went back and forth and whatever. And I know it got very just kind of juvenile during the primary. And look who they picked anyway. Marco Polo seems um, actually just to be more gullible. As each thing came out, like the Russian hacking thing. Uh, here in our own state, our own um, elections officials, office officials in each of the counties said nothing has been hacked. The FBI came to talk to us and said that it might be a possibility and there were some attempts made, but nothing's been hacked. But then at the same time, we've got our own representative Rubio running out and making tweets that, oh, if Trump was involved with this, we need to know more about this and our national security and the sanctity of our elections is at risk and Trump, Trump, Trump. He just jumped right on the headlines. Somebody needed to read the entire story to him while he was finishing his Fruit Loops because he missed the truth about the issue, which was there was no actual hacking that happened and Florida's elections were fine and his election was legitimate. He's fine. So here we have another issue here that the headlines hit and a bunch of Republicans run up there with the Senate, join up with the Democrats and think that we need to cancel the national emergency despite the president because obviously he's guilty because the headlines say he is. I'm just, I'm just frustrated. I shouldn't. I, I'm not frustrated by the calls for impeachment. We expected this. We knew this was going to happen. I honestly think it's all part of the grand plan. Whose grand plan? I'm not sure who's pulling all the strings on this one. I think it's kind of a group effort. But uh, yeah, this was going to happen. This is the entertainment that we can expect for the next 14 months leading up to the next election. The end. It's definitely taken all of the Dems off of the, uh, off of the headlines talking about this state or that state they are talking about elizabeth warren they were starting to crack down on her and what was being found in her financials but now that she's beating biden in the polls and biden's getting abused by this whole thing that's another thing this all this you know why 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 okay biden now officially being um just drugged through the mud and not just by the Republicans, but the 
Dems are allowing it. So some are saying that in this point of, you know, trying to push impeachment, that Biden is a sacrificial lamb, so to speak. Give you a little biblical lingo. Also, somebody who's getting ready to possibly bite it because of this whole thing. Um, Attorney General Barr. Because his name was mentioned in the phone call. If there is no evidence that Barr at any point worked with Ukrainian leaders to start looking into anything that had to do with Biden or his son, there is no reason for him to recuse himself from moving forward with this investigation or anything that has to do with the House investigation. And we still have, we're still waiting for, we still have these IG reports that are supposed to come out about FISA abuse. So is that really why all of this is hitting when it's hitting? Is because the IG reports are pending and they needed to take over the headlines and push harder on trying to get our attention off of what is really happening here. When I see a tweet from Hillary Clinton that says that, you know, yeah, she's saying she's, she's supporting Trump's impeachment. She still thinks she should have won uh, and has 50 billion excuses. Part of it's your fault. Anybody listening, no matter what side of the aisle it's on, it's America's fault because we're stupid. That's the reason why she didn't win. That's really what she's saying. But for her to say that for uh, a candidate to get involved with the besmirching of another candidate is un-American, I'm just, it, it, uh, 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 I think I had a stroke. That's what that noise was. Don't get excited, guys. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about some other things going on that have nothing to do with whistleblowing. Because there really are things, you know, other things that matter in the world. Um, a doll for everyone. Mattel is coming out with a line of gender neutral dolls. Um, okay. So, uh, it's going to cost about 30 bucks. It's going to feature a series of kids who go by various pronouns. Him, her, them, zem. And the slogan, a doll line designed to keep labels out and invite everyone in. Mattel. Social engineering through toys. I made that last part up. It's fine. And, and it's fine. It's fine. If there, you know, I do, I think that a doll, look, first of all, I grew up with Barbies. I did not play with Barbies. As a matter of fact, it was quite annoying whenever my sister had her Barbies out. Maybe that's the reason why she hates me so much now. And she had her Barbies out and I would be like, you know, taking their heads off and flushing them down the toilet because she would make me play Barbies with her. And I was so embarrassed. You know, it was just me and her in the room. I was just embarrassed to be playing with a Barbie doll. So <laughs> she knows and she'll never listen to the show. She hates me. Anyway, and, and I don't completely blame her. All right, so I'm not a Barbie person, but having had them in the house, know that other than Barbie having some, you know, fairly separated yet perky, but not too big breasts. But other than that, there's not like a hole where there would be a hole. Ken, certainly not anatomically correct. So if we say this doll is gender neutral, how do you determine that when the actual sex organs do not show up on the dolls in the first place? So you're telling me that because you've made the doll with short hair or a cool haircut where it's kind of shaved on the side with that circumcised penis bob kind of flipped over and maybe a trendy color of pink, that that somehow is gender neutral? The stereotypes are agonizingly exhausting. I have a friend, good friend, love him very much, drag queen. Drag queens are what they 
idolize and epitomize what a woman should like look like or does look like. I do not look like a drag queen. A drag queen does not look like me. I am a woman. You are a facsimile thereof. Sorry. You're, it's, you know, and it kind of pisses me off because they look better than me. They do a better job with their makeup. They have much more fabulous hair, but they get to pick their own hair. They get to put a wig on. I, I don't wear wigs. They're too hot. And, and they get to pick their boob size. They go in and get all, now I could do that. I could go get all the surgery done, but it's not a write-off for work for me. I got to pay out of pocket. Anyway, back to gender neutral dolls. Did you know about this, guys? You need to run out and pick one up. So we're pushing against the idea of pink and blue and genders. Everything is going to be black and white. Except, wait a second, that's racist. We've, we've banished the boys and girls labels. Did you know Disney banished boys and girls labels from their costumes when you purchase the costumes? That way, if a little boy wants to pick out Cinderella's dress, it doesn't say it's a girl's dress, so he doesn't feel bad about the fact that he wants to wear Cinderella's dress for Halloween. And that's fine. It really is fine. It's mildly abnormal, and the parents need to look at what they're doing. I hated wearing dresses. I'm not wearing a dress right now. So does that mean I have to be a lesbian or I have to be gender neutral? It's all a load of crap. You got men out there who love to wear kilts, sans underwear. That does not mean that they're gender neutral or would rather be a woman. It's all just making up labels and making up what we think everybody should be and then telling everybody that I'm anti this and anti that, but I'm creating a new label. It's frustrating. Oh, end of the show. Good God, you've been listening to me bitch for an hour. All right, so real quick, Kansas man who robbed a bank last year he was sentenced Tuesday. He said he was hoping he would get caught so that he would get some prison time so he could escape his wife. So what did the judge do this week? After he pled guilty, they uh, sentenced him to six months confinement at his home. That's right. This one's out of the Kansas City Star. Good on you, judge. Lawrence Ripple, not happy. Not happy at all. I need to meet his wife. Y'all have a great day. See you tomorrow. It's going to be Friday. That's what she said. Every news story comes with a happy ending. Graduation parties, bar mitzvahs, weddings, bat mitzvahs. it's all coming up fast. Have you found the entertainment yet? You need a DJ, a KJ, or an MC with experience, quality equipment, and a killer playlist. You need the world. World of audiovisual event services. Waves. Visit musitech.net and book your Waves Entertainment now. Waves. Fuse AV, the fusion of today's technology with custom design. Ease your business into the 21st century while retaining your company's style and branding. We custom design audiovisual solutions for businesses big and small. You'll be so successful your wife will finally quit her job and make sandwiches like she's supposed to. Oh, educated in sound engineering with decades of experience, visit musitech.net. Visit musitech.net for more information about Fuse AV.